Hi, today we are going to talk about coins in Commodore BASIC and we will do that in BASIC 2.0 which was shipped with Commodore 64 and WIC20 machines. Now before we jump into the code let me tell you what the coins are or what the coin is. Well it's really simple, coin is a program that prints out its own source code. Sounds interesting? So what does it mean it prints out its own source code? Well, every program has its own source code as a set of instructions written in a particular programming language. Now, when we compile this and run it, or if we directly run it in case of interpreted programming languages, uh, what is printed out on the screen is exactly that uh, set of instructions, that source code. So, for example, uh, if we take a look at this simple uh, program in Commodore 64, like 10 print I love Commodore 64 in quotes, and if we run it, what would appear on the screen is I love Commodore 64. If this would be a coin, what it actually should be um, uh, seen on the screen is 10 space print I love Commodore 64 in quotes. It is possible to create coin in every programming language, so <clears throat> Commodore Basic is no exception. And the coins in Commodore Basic do exist, and we are going to take a look at some of them today. Now, just a little side note, beside the coins, there is also uh, something called multi-coins. So these are the programs that behave uh, as a coin in more than one programming language. So the same source code uh, can be run through many um, different programming languages and it always displays, uh, prints out its own source code. In addition, there is also a special category of coins. They are called Ouroboros or something like that. I don't, Forgive me for my pronunciation. Well, these are the coins that uh, cycles through many programming languages and in the end they go back where they started and print out uh, their source code. One of the famous uh, Ouroboros is um, Quine Relay. This Quine is, um, goes and cycles through 128 programming languages. Starts with Ruby code, ends up with uh, Rex code and this Rex code, when it's final run uh, prints out the initial Ruby source code so okay you may wonder at this point why do we use coins for well we don't use them for anything um, they are created just for fun they are created just because they can be created and you know we developers uh, love to build uh, weird stuff on our computer and we do like challenges so the Quine is just one of the many uh, weird segments in programming. So if you're interested in more weird and quirky uh, Commodore BASIC code, uh, I will link my older video somewhere up here uh, so you can check it out also. Now, back to our topic, and that is Quine on Commodore 64. Here we are in Commodore 64 BASIC version 2.0. Now. The first thing that you may think of when we uh, talk about printing the source code of our programs in Commodore BASIC is um, we already have a command to print the source code, it's list command of course, and what we can do is simply write a program, it's called 10 list, right? If we list it, we have the source code, if we run it, if we run it, we have source code print on the screen. Hooray! It's Quine. Well, it's not. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not the Quine. Now, <clears throat> this is a good time to talk about um, some rules and regulations. So, first, each Quine uh, needs to have at least one character. So, number of characters needs to be more or equal to one. So this is because um, someone 
I believe it was a C language, uh, found out that in particular C compiler, if you uh, compile an empty file, empty source file, it will produce the valid executable. And if you run that executable, it would print out nothing. So empty source file, right? Nothing in source, nothing in output. So that's quine. So they kind of changed regulations then and said at least one character, it has to be at least one. Okay, uh, rule number two says no inputs. So what that means? That means that it's not allowed to uh, have any other inputs um, that can affect the output of our program. And rule number three, Rule number three says, no uh, direct file or memory read. So what they mean by that? So it's not allowed to go to memory or go to file system and simply open your source code and read the code out of it and print it on the screen that's considered cheating that's not a valid coin so unfortunately this rule number three uh, kind of excludes our list command because our list command actually goes to memory and reads the source code and prints it on the screen so that's considered cheating so uh, unfortunately we cannot use the list command it would be nice though <laughs> so maybe we can do something else so if we try to do something like this this is like a print um, abbreviation and we have write uh, syntax error right hey look at that oh I'm missing one space, so I need to tweak a little bit. Syntax, space, space, error, no more, error. Ah, there we go. Well, unfortunately, this is not the coin either. So, rule number four. It must be a valid code. The coin must be a valid code, so this print syntax error is definitely not a valid code, so this is not the coin either. <laughs> now, move on to some real coins. I'm going to show you two coins. None of these two uh, was written by me, fortunately. Um, writing a coin is not so terribly difficult, but it's not easy either and you're gonna see why so here is one coin so this coin was written by daniel olsimani i hope i pronounced it right and i will place the link uh, down in the description of this video uh, it's a quite uh, interesting um, coin and if we consider that uh, commodore basic is uh, especially this uh, version 2.0 is not really um, so much high level language. Um, this is um, amazingly small piece of code to be a coin. Let me show you how this works. Now, uh, if I press return, you see, it's print out exactly what the source was. It reproduces exactly the same thing as the output of, the, of this program. Amazing, right? Now, I'm going to try to uh, break this a little bit uh, so that makes more sense um, how this works and how it's built. It's uh, actually quite interesting process building a coin. But uh, before we do that, let me show you another coin in Commodore Basic. Let's put it in. Okay, let's list it. So as you can see, this um, it's a different type of coin in Commodore Basic. It consists of a data section and the code itself. So if I run this, 
to type run. Wait a moment, and here we go. It's print out its own source code, believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, now I might explain the, this one also, but uh, it will be much easier to start on the smaller one. Here we go. So <clears throat> you can see this uh, little coin is actually composed out of the two main sections. One is this a string variable and it contains whatever is it is inside the quotes and the actual uh, program that uh, actually prints out the this variable in uh, such a way that it actually reproduce uh, itself so this is the whole concept of the coin so you have uh, you building this uh, part of the your program that manipulates string and prints uh, this string in uh, different combine the string uh, in different ways on the screen and in the same time while you building this um, piece of the code you actually filling it um, inside your variable that you actually try to print out so as you can see some <coughs> similarities between this and this okay so they're exactly the same the same uh, piece of the code so this is how you build uh, a coin and also if you notice this beginning it is very similar to this okay this is how this uh, coin actually works let me break this a little bit so this is definitely uh, this is a string this is um, command left this is character 34 now this character 34 is actually um quote this is again character 34 quote this is right so what this piece of the code does, it takes this a string variable and let me break this also. Okay. Now let me delete this. So this is our variable a string. Okay. Let's follow this code that get executed and try to create our output so left uh, so this command actually takes first three characters of the a string and prints it on the screen so first three character is this okay here we have it three characters next we have a uh, character number 34 which is quotes Okay, then it prints entire a string variable. So whatever is in here. So you take whatever it's in here and print this. Okay. Next thing is print the um, quote again. So print quote. Then it prints the right. Um, it uses the right command and prints. Uh, write 34 characters of the a string so 34 character is so let's count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 1 2 3 4 so this and prints it out here we go now if i remove this You see, that's a coin. 
Interesting concept, isn't it? Yeah. Now, the second example, uh, it uses the different, little bit different approach, but the concept is uh, almost the same. So you have the, instead of the string uh, variable, we have data, we have set of data, and we have actual piece of the code that gets executed, okay? So this data here actually contains exactly this piece of the code and not only um, the code but the number of the lines also so here's the catch we have our data and we read our data okay we read and store it into a variable then we use this uh, for loop and we read this a variable and recreate this um, data back as a string so we rec recreate them exactly with the line number and string data and everything so this part is a line number then we have data and then we have the rest of the bytes okay see and then we print that on the screen, so that, that is the first part of the code. Now, this part of the code here is actually written inside this data, so these numbers also uh, represent the, exactly the characters, uh, including the line numbers and everything. These three lines simply uh, print them and convert them into characters, and that actually prints this part including all this okay so this part uh, sorry this part read the data section this part recreates all the data that has been stored into a variable and recreates this section so this part and this last three lines simply prints that data and converts them each uh, byte into into character and if I take this piece of the code again, and so let me switch to our code and if we print this, yeah. Ah. So, list, this is our program. So from the uh, list 0 to uh, 150, so this is the data section, and list 150, uh, and so on, this is our code that actually computes. So if we run it, so we need to take a, wait a little bit until it's read all the data, and then now it's printing, recreating the data itself and then it prints out the source code this part that converts data into characters and prints them out this is perfectly valid coin i'm not really sure who actually wrote this one it's a really ni nice example so this is all for today i hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did you can leave a comment down below also, if you know some more weird stuff in Commodore Basic, you can let me know. And until next time, goodbye.